I don't want to keep Albert Breer waiting. Kind enough to join us on short notice. Senior NFL reporter, lead content strategist from the Monday morning quarterback. And uh, I think you're going to get a blizzard up uh, your way there, Albert. Yeah, I had a uh, – well, that's going to hit you guys too, I would think, right? I no? think I think you get a big, uh, bigger one up there. Yeah, I had a uh, – so I actually planned to head for it. I booked my flight to Kansas City at 5 a.m. On, on Saturday morning to try to beat it. <laughs> And then last night, I got one of those notifications on your phone from like American Airlines yeah. saying it had already been canceled. Oh, so like 36 hours ahead of time, I spent like two hours on the phone trying to work everything out. So I'm flying out at, I think, 5 p.m. today. So hopefully I'll make it out OK today. But yeah, I mean, apparently we're getting two feet or something like that. I don't know. We'll see. What's the atmosphere in Kansas City like and how is that comparable to any other place or is it? Yeah, I'd say it's like a college atmosphere, you know, um, there are a few of them that are like that, like where the fans are right on top of you. And it is, I mean, like very, very loud. Like I think Buffalo and Green Bay both feel like college stadiums too, just because of the way the, the stands are situated and it, they're much closer to the players, you know? Um, and so like, I think the combination of noise, which I, like some other stadiums do have noise, um, the combination of noise and like just them, the stadium being like physically smaller and less spread out than the new stadiums, I think makes it like kind of intimidating for, for opponents. And so, um, yeah, I can't wait to get out there. And it's going to be interesting too, you know, to see Cincinnati and, and Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase and all these guys who sort of changed the face of who the Bengals are get to operate in that sort of environment. Um, what happened yesterday, given – my interview with Sean Payton, the Cowboys mm -hmm. said Mike McCarthy is coming back. Why, why yep. yesterday? Like, I don't, I'm, I'm trying to follow all of this of why did it take this long for what we thought was just rubber stamping? Mike McCarthy was coming back, but it felt like there was a little bit of gray area here. Was there? Yeah. Dan Quinn's the domino. Yeah. I mean, I think, I, 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 I think Jerry Jones and Stephen Jones fell in love with Dan Quinn over the last year. And I think part of the uncertainty was not wanting to lose him and looking at the potential for having to go into 2022 with a new defensive coordinator, maybe even a new offensive coordinator, Kellen Moore still in play in Miami. Like, and so what does that look like? And so, you know, I, I don't think that they were walking Mike McCarthy out in the plank, but I do think to some degree there was, like, let's play this. Let, let's let this play out a little bit, especially when you see Dan Quinn is interviewing in all of these different places, you know, and then, you know, Dan, Dan doesn't get the, the Denver job. And like, he sort of comes to this realization. I really love my job right now. Why didn't I want he to get that Denver job? I think it was a combination of things. Timing's part of it. Um, Nathaniel Hackett did a great job in his interview. I think there's the bonus that Nathaniel Hackett brings with him, which is the relationship with Aaron Rodgers. Um, and I, I just think that like over the last couple of days, like George Payton's got a very close relationship with Dan Quinn. And if this, you know, if you go back like a couple of weeks, I, I think George Payton, if you, you gave him truth serum, he'd tell you Quinn was like 100% the leader going into the process. I think Nathaniel Hackett did enough to win over George Payton, but also did enough to win over other people in that building. Mm. And he's such a positive presence. And then you've got the relationship with Rodgers. You've got the work that he's done with different quarterbacks. Like he had to work with EJ Manuel in Buffalo. He had to work with Blake Bortles in Jacksonville. <laughs> so like the combination of like intelligence and energy. And you know, sometimes too, Dan, teams go the other way, right? Like, so they had the older, more experienced guy, right? Like before in Vic Fangio. Now you see the younger, more energetic guy. So I think it was a combination of things. And then I think, you know, for, for Dan and he maintains, he's maintained this for months, you know, like I am not just going to job jump. I'm not, I'm not going to just take the second opportunity because it's sitting there in front of me. I think after it was a no from Denver, he gets back from Chicago, um, you know, on Wednesday night, wakes up Thursday morning. And it's a little bit like, what am I doing? I love my job here. I'm not 100% sold on these other places. If it was Denver. Yeah. And I think that that sort of that epiphany came to him. Like I really like last year, I, I'll tell you last year was like one of the most fun years he's had in coaching 
And so I think the idea of running that back was actually really appealing to him. And I think he knows with the group that he's had, there's a good chance there's going to be more bites at the apple down the road. Do you think Jerry Jones, I know Sean Payton denied it. Mm -hmm. Do you think Jerry Jones reached out to Sean Payton's people? I mean, I don't think he has to reach out to his people. (laughs) <laughs> those two <laughs> uh, all right i i was trying to be fair to the situation but you know what i'm saying like i don't think i don't think jerry needs to I don't do think you jerry think needs he called don Yee. <laughs> do you think jerry jones called up sean pig i think they've talked probably yeah like i like I, and i i you know they're very close like that's not like a phony relationship that's not like a a surface relationship that a guy who used to coach there has with an owner like that's a genuine relationship so you know, I'm sure at one point or another, even if it was just say, hey, congratulations on a great run in New Orleans, they talked. Yeah. Um, and I don't think Sean Payton knows. And I don't know if like you kind of got this from your talk with him, Dan, but I don't think Sean Payton knows what he's going to do. Like, I don't think he knows what it's going to be like over the next year. And so, like, could he wind up in Dallas in 2023? Absolutely. You know, like his his kid, one of his kids is in college there. Um, you know, obviously he spent a good period of his life there. Um, both his kids went to high school there. So like the idea of going back to Dallas, coaching for Jerry, having that team, like, I think that appeals to him and maybe he does that in 2023. I also wouldn't rule out. And and I'd I'd love to hear your opinion because you talked to him yesterday. Like, I don't think it's impossible. He's Bill Cower. You know what I mean? Like where you Mm -hmm. think he's going back and everybody says it'll be a year or two. And then he just decides that he likes the life that television affords him where he's working 35 days a year and making millions and not having to worry about, you know, how he's going to cover the other team's tight end um, every week. Well, I did bring that up to him. I said, you know, you, if you're going to do this, you have to commit to it. It's not something you can master in one year. Mm -hmm. And I even brought up what Jim Nance said to me earlier this week. He and Tony Romo felt like that they had their best game that Chiefs Bills game. That's five years of working together. And I said to Sean, he goes, Well, if you know me, I don't do anything half, you know, mm-hmm. I, I go all in on it. And I said, You have to do that if you want to be great at it. And it seemed like he was w- willing to at least explore that. Let me go back to the situation with Denver yeah. with Nathaniel Hackett. Explain how they could pull off a deal that would get them Devontae Adams and Aaron Rodgers. So they're in good shape cap. They, they've been preparing for this. Like they've been preparing to take their swing at a quarterback. It goes back. I mean, they really like Justin Fields and, you know, like they were of a mind maybe to take him. and they decided, all right, like, let's wait, let's do like the prudent thing, like the conservative thing. They got Patrick Sertan, who's a really good piece and let's continue to build assets. They trade Von Miller during the year, like cap wise, they're in good shape. They've got a lot of guys who are on rookie contracts and they've set it up. So Aaron Rodgers can walk in there and bring people with him. And so, um, but what do they give up that, because you have to trade him, right? You have to trade for him for, for Devante. No, what do you, you got to trade for, uh, Rogers, Rogers. three first round picks. Do you think that would get it done? I know that they don't, I was told they don't green Bay doesn't want players. They want to get picks picks. Right. Yeah. So like, I don't, like, I think it's going to take, I think it's going to take picks because now you're talking about, okay, like Green Bay's got a little bit of a cap issue. And the way you solve that is by getting younger. And that's, you know, where your cheap labor comes from is the draft. And, um, and yeah, I mean, I think if the Packers, if this, if that's the way it goes, if two weeks from now, Rogers and the Packers come to the same sort of decision that like Matthew Stafford and the Lions came to last year and they decide we're going to part ways, I think Denver's at the top of the list. I think Denver appeals to, to Aaron Rodgers. And I know the Broncos believe this, Dan. And I think I brought this up to you before. They're not that different now than they were in 2012 when they went and got Peyton Manning, yeah. right? Yeah. Like you look at like the way the team set up, young skill position talent, like they had with Decker and Thomas and Thomas um, in 2012. Now they've got Judy, they've got Hamler, they've got Sutton, they've got Patrick, they've got Fant, they've got Javante Williams. And then on defense... Back then, they had the young pass rusher, the young corner, Von Miller, Chris Harris. What do they have now? Bradley Chubb, Patrick Sertan. So, like, you've got the structure of, like, a a young team. A lot of those guys on rookie contracts, which gives you cap flexibility. And you can say to Aaron, everybody on this team is getting better right now. So you're going to be joining a team that's ascending. And, oh, by the way, because those guys are on rookie contracts, we can maybe do a few things to make the team even better, bring some guys you're comfortable with in here. So, yeah, I mean – 
you and know, then Adams, they just they now, could, yeah. Can, can the Packers franchise him? But they does, can, but it, it's tricky. The Packers would need like Adams would almost need to play ball with them because they can't trade him unless he signs his tender. And if he wanted to, he could just say, I'm not signing it. They can't trade him. So he could actually, because they're $45 million over the cap, the, t- the franchise tag for receivers is about $18 million. So at the very least, you've got to carry him onto your roster into the new league year to trade him, which means you'd have to create that $18 million of cap space when you're already $45 million over. So to some degree, Devontae Adams would have to play ball with the Packers. And why would he do that? Like, if he knows they're trading Aaron Rodgers, if that's what happens, like, why would he say, yeah, I'll, I'll go and make sure that you get a first round pick from somebody else and make sure that I'm not going to make it to the open. No, he's going to want to go to the open market. So I think that because of the cap logistics, Devontae's in a, in, a, in, a, in a spot where he could leverage his way to free agency. And then if he wanted to just go sign with whatever team Rodgers winds up with. Great to talk to you. Thanks again for joining us on short notice and uh, enjoy the weekend. All right. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, buddy. That's Albert Breer, senior NFL reporter, lead content strategist for the Monday morning quarterback.